YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the Dalek patrol ship and Dalek pilot from the three and three quarter inch Doctor Who range. When the three and three quarter inch range was announced one of the things that really appealed to me about the scale change was the idea of play sets and vehicles, something that we didn't really get with the five inch range because everything was a bit too big and play sets don't really happen these days. So let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. The Dalek patrol ship comes in a large window box that reveals the toy inside, including the new Dalek pilot. The back of the box features the same image of the toy, as well as a screen grab from the day of the Doctor, and also a new bio about the episode. Now let's begin by looking at the Dalek ship. So first off, this is meant to be roughly based on the ships that we saw in the day of the Doctor. When I watched the day of the Doctor trailer and I saw those ships, I thought, huh, they kind of look like the spider Daleks that were proposed for the Steven Spielberg Doctor Who film back in the 90s. And I'm sure that that's where they got their visual cues from. So here we have something very similar. Now, if you've seen actual pictures of the ships in the story, they don't quite look like this. Very similar, but they're a lot larger. There are more of these sort of segmented panels and they actually house three Daleks. I can understand why they didn't want to do it so that it housed three Daleks, as cool as that would have been, that would have been amazing. But you've got to think, this is actually quite a small toy. If you own something like the flight control TARDIS from the five inch range, it's about as tall as that and maybe slightly wider. It's not that big. As I said, play sets and vehicles, they aren't very popular these days. So, to I mean, toy stores don't like carrying them because they're big and bulky, but this is actually quite neat and small. So um, I can understand why they did it. And you know, it looks fairly similar to what we see in the episode. This actually twists 360 degrees. The gun, um, which almost looks like an eye stalk, pivots. Uh, like so. Well, in terms of detail, we have some nice little bits here with the little vent type things around the side. We've got some ridges and things sculpted along the top of the dome. We also have some rivets and things sculpted into the panel and some little plates, all of which are painted gold compared to the standard Dalek bronze. Looking at the large turret on the top, this kind of resembles the Dalek gun that we see on a standard Dalek notably this portion here. It does look fairly similar. However, this time we've got all these extra added bits, all these ridges and pipes. We have this large tube that comes down the bottom. Again, nicely detailed. We've got some nice little rivets down here and bits and pieces like that. And on the top, we have these two canister-like things. The end of the turret also features a large blue missile meant to represent the laser coming out of the Dalek gun. And this actually has a firing mechanism. There's a small black button on the side and once you click it, it fires with quite impressive force and impressive speed. Um, I actually tested this out by shooting my dad with it. So uh, there you go, kids. Use this to shoot your parents with. Don't aim it at their faces because you might shoot their eyes out. So don't do that, but shoot them in the torso or whatever. You know, that's always a good laugh. I always used to do it when I was playing with stuff as a child. Moving further down, we have um, more sort of ridges and things going on, painted black, uh, sort of like the inner section of the Dalek ship. When we go a bit lower again, we have these large bronze panels with the gold hemispheres down the side. We have these two large silver girder-like structures. Again, there's some nice little details. We've got some sort of tubing things going on here and at the top, um, all of which has been sculpted around to sort of hide the screws and things that are holding it all together. That's quite clever. The three bronze panels are held in place by these black arms that come out from the base of the neck of the Dalek turret. These all end in a spherical sort of nubbin, which then plug into the bronze panels. Looking at the controls of the ship, you can see it's all very simplistic. We've got a large ball-like thing at the side there, which is clearly for the plunger to plug into. And then we have six other small gold switches. Again, the base is very simple. We've got these circles around the outside, some of which are clearly covers for screws and things. And we also have a circular dip 
and some smaller ridges just here. And those are for the wheels on the Dalek pilot so that they can clip into those spaces so that the Dalek isn't flying about the place when you're flying your ship around. The base has more of these bronze plates with the hemispheres coming out the sides, as well as a ridged base along the bottom. So far, this seems to be a rather fun toy. We've got this really nice turret on the top, and we have the missile that fires out from the front. Now, I've already talked about all the details and things, and I've mentioned how these panels detach. Now, these panels detach not only so you can actually get the Dalek in there, but also it's to simulate damage. So if you were playing with your Dalek ship and you wanted it to get shot down by, I don't know, a Gallifreyan turret on the outskirts of Arcadia, well, you could easily just pull off one of the things or pull off both of the both of the panels and make it look like it's slightly battle damaged or if you were playing around with it and you wanted it to look like it was destroyed on the floor you could have stuff like this and stack it all up on top of each other and you know you could just make it look like it was a wreckage so that's a really nice feature however I don't know if this is the case with all of these Dalek ships but mine seems to be very temperamental with these panels now when I first took this out the box Bear in mind that it isn't fully assembled. Obviously, it's quite self-explanatory how these connect. I mean, I've shown you already. You've got small holes here. You've got the nubbins. They should just click in. Well, this, look how loose that is. I mean, I'm barely touching it and it is already falling off. Uh, so that isn't great. Um, this one is a bit firmer, only a bit, but the strongest one is the one at the back. This one actually fits in really snug and tight. Why the other ones are so loose, I don't know. Now, when I was trying to put it together, the amount of times these things fell off drove me mad. Now, if I was a child who wanted to fly this thing around the front room whilst playing with their Doctor Who toys, I'd be really annoyed that all these panels just fell off so easily. I mean, I only have to pick it up, look, I only twisted it and the thing fell off. So the other two seem to be fairly secure. Oh, no, that one didn't take much. I mean, that one isn't going anywhere. I don't know if they're all like this. If you've got one and yours is a bit crap and they just fall off, let me know. I'd be intrigued. Um, I have found, however, that if you plug these things in and twist them, they do lock into place much better. Now, it doesn't actually say to do this in the instructions. The instructions, well, they just explain the obvious. But once you've done that, it does seem, oh, well, it does sort of seem that some of them stay in place a bit better. My other criticism about this is that these arms here are static. When the original prototype was shown at Toy Fair, I assumed that these arms would retract inwards and that the whole ship would sort of close in on itself like a cocoon. I mean, judging by the shape of it, it does kind of seem like that is what is meant to happen. You could imagine that this would sort of lift up and these would just close in and it would all click together and you'd have like this big Dalek sort of tank ship thing. And then um, when the Dalek piloting it wants to get out, it would all go and your Dalek would come out and that would be that. Sadly, that doesn't happen. These are solid. It is just how it is. That, I think, is a real missed trick. Um, perhaps they, I mean, I'm sure that it was something that was thought about. Perhaps it would have just bumped the price up too much. But I think it would have been cool. It would have been a really nice feature. It's cool that we've got the firing gun. I mean, it's nice that you can pull these off or just stick them out into a slight breeze and let them fall off. But it would have been cool that the whole thing could have collapsed in on itself and made it like a very self-contained armoured machine. So despite those issues, it is quite a nice ship. The only thing I would have said is it could have done with being painted with more of a dirty look because at the moment it just looks very pristine and clean and it does kind of feel a bit like a toy. I think if they'd have weathered it, you know, given it a few dark washes here and there, make it look like it had been shot at and bashed about and battered, I think it would have just made it look a bit more rough and ready for battle, less like a toy. So let's take a look at the Dalek pilot. Now in the episode the Daleks piloting these ships were just standard Daleks, but 
because the people working on the toy line are very clever fans, they thought, well, why not hark back to the Hartnell era and make the Dalek pilot have a very similar colour scheme to the saucer pilot from the Dalek invasion of Earth. And so that's what they did. We've got a bronze Dalek, but it has the black panels along the skirt and the dome like the saucer pilot from Dalek invasion of Earth. That's a really cool idea. It doesn't matter that it didn't feature in the episode. It just looks really nice. So in terms of articulation, it's a Dalek. We know what Dalek articulation is like. It's the same with any Dalek toy. The head does 360s, the eye stalk lowers and rises, and the gun and the plunger are ball jointed. And it's also on three wheels. Simple. In terms of detail, well, it's a very nice sculpt of a new series Dalek. We have some nice details around the head, all of the small little ridges and things like that, the sort of cowl look around the eye stalk. The dome lights are just clear plastic and look very much like the dome lights we see in the program. The neck bin, that's also been done very nicely. Again, lots of accurate ridges and things have all been sculpted in. We've got the nuts and bolts can be clearly seen holding it all together. The same can be seen of the shoulder section. We can see all the nuts and bolts holding the solar slats into place. Again, around the front, all the nuts and bolts, some nice detailing around the gun boxes. The plunger and the gun are very simple, but very effective. And the paintwork on the skirt is also very nice. Not much in the way of paint bleed. All the hemispheres seem to be quite self-contained. You get some slight bleed with some of the black merging into some of the other panels, but it's very minor and not very noticeable at all. So overall, this is a very nice Dalek. The bronze does seem slightly lighter compared to the first release. It does look darker on this one. Um, and again for the gold, the gold looks slightly lighter as well, but I could be wrong there. It might just be the lighter bronze making the gold look slightly lighter. The paint applications on the eye stalk is much better on this Dalek. This one is like a huge massive blob, which is a shame, but here it is slightly more crisp and the actual sculpt for the eye stalk itself doesn't feel as soft. It seems more defined. So let's put this Dalek into its ship. So we'll take the back panel off of here. We'll uh, get the Dalek to line up as best as we can. Now that seems to have sort of clicked into place where the wheels are. It doesn't seem to want to move back and forth, as you can see. And we'll place this on the back. And there we have it. We have our Dalek pilot. So how does the Dalek hold up in terms of flying the thing? Well, it does say in the instruction that if you veer too far to the left or to the right or veer up or veer down, it might, it might knock the Dalek out of its position. And that is true. If you try flying this thing around, this Dalek doesn't like staying in position. It doesn't take much for him to fall out, which is a shame. You'd have thought they could have at least put some sort of... I don't know, some, something at the base, or I don't want to say a belt, but they want to put something in to just keep him more secure. Maybe a peg or a plug or something, just to keep him in tight. So overall, it's quite a nice set. It isn't bad for £20. I mean, you're getting a Dalek that would normally set you back £7, and then you're getting all this, you know, you've got the firing function, you've got the uh, removable panels to make it look battle damaged, they're a bit of a pain in the arse if you're trying to play with it because they will fall off. And I do think it could have done with being a bit more weathered just to make it look like it's actually been in battle rather than it looking like a toy. But overall, I think it's quite nice. Um, if you're doing animations and stuff, this is really, really useful. Even if you're doing animations with five inch figures, this could be really good for just having some green screen effects, having them fly around and blowing stuff up. So this is actually a really, really nice toy. I definitely like the fact that we're seeing some vehicles come into the Doctor Who range. I know it's a different scale, but that's just one of those things. I would really like to see some other ships and things. Um, I don't know what else they can do at the moment because, uh, well, there's not really any particular ships that are this sort of size. A Sontaran ship, that would be great if they did a Sontaran ship. Maybe one of the new ones where you can actually see the pilot sat inside flying it around. That would be really cool. So uh, there we go, character. Make a Sontaran scout ship with pilot. That'd be really cool. So thanks for watching this review, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed trying to tackle the panels of doom that uh, 
surround this toy. My next review will be the Time Zone playset based on Hyde. Now, why that particular playset? Well, all that will be explained when I come to review it next time. So thank you for watching, and I shall see you then.